G'day folks, thanks for tuning in. In today's video we're going to be making our own metallic oil paints for miniature painting using pigment powder, specifically these four Pearl X powders. Now you may be wondering, why do this? And while there are perfectly good metallic oil paints out there, such as the silver from Gamblin, our choices are fairly limited, especially when it comes to warmer metals like gold and bronze. We could mix yellow and red into silver, but as much as I like to mix, I find it handy to have certain colours ready to go. And once you see how potent the results can be, I reckon you'll agree that it's worth the effort. So let's get started. I have out four pigments from this Pearl X line, Super Copper, Sunset Gold, Super Bronze, and Solar Gold. I chose these as they closely resemble some common warm metallic acrylic paints that you might be familiar with. Like all pigment powders, we can dust and fix these to our minis, but also, like all pigment powders, we can make our own paints out of them with just a bit of oil. You can get a glimpse of how shiny the powder is. Now this process can get messy, so gloves and a surface that you can easily clean or otherwise aren't too attached to are both recommended, along with a mask to protect yourself from the dust. There are a few ways to approach this. Today I'll be using these cheap Dixie cups to mix in, and we'll be using this linseed oil from Speedball as my binding agent. Linseed oil is one of the more common oils to mix with, though other options such as safflower, walnut and peanut exist. They all have varying properties, largely around drying time, and I find linseed works fine for our purposes. We can use pipettes to transfer our oil if we wanted to be a bit more careful, but you'll see shortly that they're not at all necessary, and we'll be putting our paint into these cheap dropper bottles. Ultimately we're looking for something like this, which again may be familiar if you're coming from acrylics. An easily accessible paint in a dropper bottle to ensure that we're only using as much as we need. Now these were made with a different brand of powder, but have lasted me for well over a year now. We'll also need something to stir with. I prefer old brushes, as the bristles really help to break up the powder. With how cheap synthetic craft brushes are, you may want to have a couple dedicated to this purpose. I've also got a dropper of thinner on hand, as adding some of this will affect the viscosity, and also slightly cut down on future drying time. And again, I highly recommend gloves, and can't stress enough how important it is to have some kind of mask or respirator, as I reckon it's never a good idea to breathe in anything that you don't have to. I also wanted to talk briefly about this set, as this is actually the second time I filmed this video. I'd originally made it with another product before stumbling onto these. This set was quite cheap at about $1.50 per pot, and comes with 32 metallic and iridescent powders, from the common metals we'll be using, to a whole range of vibrant, saturated colours, as well as some neat pearlescence, and a number of variations on the aforementioned metals. Now I've not used these before, so we'll be learning together, but I see a lot of potential here for future projects, outside of the usual grey, yellow and red metals that we'd like to use. I also think it's a better representation of the kind of product you're likely to find in your local arts and crafts store, so we'll see how we go. Alright, now that we've got our gear sorted, let's mix some paint. Right, now full disclaimer that for me, this isn't an exact science. Far from it. While you could take measurements to find the optimal ratios, I prefer to just eyeball it, starting by putting a few shakes of powder into our mixing cup. Here it's better to go too thick than thin, so we'll start out with our powder and go from there. I'm starting with the pipette to add a bit of oil so we can see it in action. You're going to want to start with more oil than this, but you can see how quickly it binds with the pigment. Now I remind myself that the Dixie cup is big enough that I'm just overcomplicating things with the pipette. And here we get a real preview of what we're in for, a beautiful molten metal from that sunset gold. Having a puddle of oil on top will cut down on the dust, and we can dive right in with our brush. We want to really work it in and break up all the clumps. If you find it's clumping a lot and sticking to your brush, add a bit more oil. We want it flowing, but not so much that it's running off the brush. I like to press it against the side of the cup to test out how it flows. We're looking for something creamy, so expect a bit of back and forth here. Once I'm happy with the consistency, I'll add just a couple of drops of thinner. To be honest, this much is pretty negligible, but I find it makes it flow just a touch better, and any amount of thinner is going to reduce your drying time. Alright, moment of truth. Another thing I like about these cups is that they're easy to fold, so we can funnel our paint. Of course you could use an actual funnel if you wanted, but so long as you're either careful or don't care much about your work area, you can get by like this. Once the bulk of it's in there, you can use your brush to scoop the rest, as the bottle should be sufficiently weighed down to hold its place. Of course the opposite is now true of the cup, so be careful not to leave your brush in it like this. I recommend adding some kind of agitator to your bottle, to make it easier to stir, as the oil will separate out a bit over time. Pop the cap on, lock the lid in tight, and give it a shake. That's all there really is to it. But I wanted to show you the other powders, just so you can see the differences in hue, and to help you decide in case you're only looking for one or two of these. We've got Super Copper on the left, Super Bronze in the middle, and Solar Gold on the right. 
But remember too that whichever powders you use, you can always mix in other colours to vary the hue some when you're actually painting. Process is much the same, add your powder, then your oil, stir, and adjust your quantities until you've got a consistency that you're happy with. Since we'll be putting these in a dropper bottles, we want it thin enough to be usable. This will increase the drying time a bit, but the few drops of thinner that we add will help counter it, and we can always add more thinner once the paint's out on the palette. You'll also find that over time they separate in the bottle, but that's what the agitator's for. Again, you can expect a lot of life just out of a little bit of powder. And because these samples will easily fit in our dropper bottles, I'm just going to use the whole thing. But I recommend leaving some powder spare in case you need to thicken up your paint. If you later find that your paint isn't quite what you expected, you could always add more oil or powder to your dropper bottle using a pipette or small measuring spoon. I really do enjoy that effect, and I'm excited to see what some of the more outlandish colours will give us. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on those. And again, don't be like me here. Plan ahead for a space to put your brush while your cup's empty. And here they are all together. Sunset Gold, Super Copper, Super Bronze, and Solar Gold. And for fun, the aftermath in our cups. Here you can get a sense of how potent these paints are, and how they're going to look on your minis. Speaking of aftermath, you've got a few options for cleanup. I prefer just to dab away the worst with a paper towel, then put a bit of thinner on the surface and wipe the rest away. If I wasn't too concerned about the grit on my cutting mat, I'd use brush cleaner instead for an even easier time. Simple as that. So now that we've got our paints made, I wanted to show you one of them in action, so you can get a peek at the possibilities. Here I have our darks as in purple and asphalt them, both of which I'll be using as a foundation for our solar gold, as well as the gold on its own. Just a quick shake of the bottle and you can see how well that paint flows, while still retaining a nice shape on our makeshift palette. I've applied our foundations to the pauldrons of the Space Marine and wiped away the excess, and, like we always do, I'm loading up the brush with gold before wiping away most of that excess. We'll start with it over primer. Right away we can see that it both covers very well and goes on smooth. It's also quite bright with a lot of luster, which is good because when we're working with metallics we can only go as bright as the pigment that we're using, so this one gives us a lot of room to go darker. You can see that in action as we move on to the purple pauldron, which is also causing the gold to desaturate a bit, as yellow and purple are complementary colours. It's looking a bit more silvery or worn, but the purple also provides some interesting shadows. We can restore more of that gold by layering on more paint, giving us more control over the final look. Conversely, the asphalted foundation is giving us a deep, rich golden brown. Maybe not at first, but as it mixes it's definitely taking on a darker tone. And that brown is likewise giving us some really nice shadows. Now I will say the metallic flakes are a bit larger than I was expecting, but this is common with cheaper powders. This also isn't necessarily a bad thing, just something to be mindful of, and they really do pack a punch in terms of luster. This is just a quick demonstration, but hopefully it's giving you some ideas of what's possible with these. I suspect that there are some Custodes players in particular out there who are feeling a little bit excited right now. And for comparison, here's our Perlex side by side with some Green Stuff World Gold Pigment Powder, mixed in the same way, applied over the same foundations. Again, our flakes are noticeably bigger on the left, but so is the impact. I find both coverage and ease of application to be similar, which to me are the most important things, and I think these fun craft powders make for a decent alternative. So I hope this has been useful, and given you something new and fun to try on your oil journey. Thank you very much for your company today. If you have any questions about any of the products or techniques I've talked about, or have a topic you'd like me to cover in a future video, I'd love to hear it. Again, thanks for being here, and take care.